Hey, my name is Brianna C. I'm a youth ambassador with the Community Enrichment Project, and I'm here with Kaya, my co host. <laughs> Today, we are going to start our very first podcast. Very excited. <laughs> We're going to talk about friendships. <laughs> so, some background knowledge about me and Kaya's friendship. Would you like to? Yes. Um, fun fact, I have absolutely no recollection of any of my high school friendships, how they started. Um, I just went with Brianna. I think our friend group stayed mesh and we just kind of took it from there. Like we had mutual friends. I've actually known Brianna since I was in 10th grade. She was in 11. I'm a sophomore in college. Four and a half, almost five years, I think. Yeah. It's actually kind of crazy. Like we've always, like when we met, we were on I don't want to say good terms because it was never a bad term to be on, but like we were just always cordial, and our friendship, our friendship just grew like mm-hmm. progressively as time. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, remember, <laughs> I remember we went on a college tour. Yes, that's how it started. Yeah, <laughs> and the rest is history. Literally, that was in I think 2017, 2018, 2017, because mm-hmm. we went to Universal Studios together and we had a blast and we saw right. alligators. You remember that? It was like. You saw alligators? Yeah. And there was a guy who was holding alligators, I think. I have a photo. For okay. <laughs> it was me, Jane, and Jasmine. It was fun. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So we started. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get into some green flags and some red flags about friendships and just about how to avoid some things and set boundaries and have healthy friendships. So we're going to start with the green flag. So the first green flag we have is we have comfortability. Um, how do you feel after spending time with them? And I think I struggle, I used to struggle with this a lot because I used to make myself extremely, like try to fit in with people that I don't mesh with really well and just try to be something that I'm not because of fear that I won't find the friends that are for me. So definitely paying attention to how you feel after spending time with people. Mm-hmm. It's so important. Because it will save you from a lot. <laughs> it's, yes, it's the most important. Actually, I felt the, uh, the exact same way. But more so for me, I felt like I was shrinking myself to fit into friend groups that like I know I didn't belong in. But I was like, I mean, I'd rather have somebody than to be alone. And I'm so happy I grew out of that mindset. That was definitely like from freshman year up until honestly, I want to say the end of my junior year. So I really only had one year of common sense on high school when it came to friends, but it's okay because I was like 15. Um, <laughs> but absolutely, how do you feel after you hang out with anybody, but especially people who you call your friends is so important. Um, the friend group that I have now, which does include Slick Breezy, um, which does include Slick Breezy, um, when I hang out with them, I just, I feel recharged. Like I feel like a battery mm-hmm. or a phone even, and I'm just like, their energy, it recharges me, and it's like, I, it's like I'm okay to get through after the rest of the week. Cause I just saw y'all, yeah. and I love that about us. It's always fun, but the thing you said about shrinking yourself, like, yeah. I think that I also, I didn't grow out of my friendships that I was doing that in until 2020. So I was friends with those people for years because mm-hmm. CPA was like oh, seven, seven to 12, and then I was 12, like when I went to college, I didn't have any friends going to college. So it was like, I have to hold on to my high school friends. Yeah. But it was like, I had no choice but to let them go. Yeah. So yeah, definitely like the friendship that I have now is very sporadic, but mm-hmm. like all of my friends are genuine individuals. At first I was like, I have to make sure that I scout my friends. Yeah. But the more I just let go of the control, it was just like, okay, like I like these people, they're mm-hmm. cool. Um, similarly, something else that we had on our list was how they react to good news, um, and if they view you as competition. Um, I have a little story. I had a friend, well, we're still kind of cool, but I had a friend in high school, and I presumed us to be, like, pretty close, because we shared a lot of similarities in our home lives, and academically as well, and I'm one of those people, like, growing up, my mom really, um, she instilled in me that it's not going to always be your time, but it is very important to clock for others because you don't know what they've gone through like prior to their blessing. And, you know, even if, even if she wasn't the first person who would have 
introduced that to me. Um, that's something that I've just learned in life. Because if you can't clap for other people when it's their time, you don't never really get your time to shine. That's true. Um, so I say all that today. I had a friend, and it's like, whenever she would accomplish something really well, I would like genuinely be proud of her. She had been through a lot. But the energy was never returned. It was like I would share my good news, and then I would get silent. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and like it never it never made me change who I am or like how I supported her or how I react to her good news. It just made me reevaluate our friendship life. Mm -hmm. But when you realize that a lot of that stuff has absolutely nothing to do with you but everything with their um insecurities and stuff that like they're not comfortable talking about or just stuff that like they never had the chance to do, that's when it clicks. It just sucks because it's like I would have never thought that this would give me. Um, and because of that, like we're not we're not as close anymore. But I do hope in the future that we can reconvene or that at least she grows out of that. Because I don't want to be friends with nobody like that. Like if you're still like that and we're in our twenties now, we can probably do that. I definitely think that in friendships, if you know like jealousy is a normal emotion. Everybody's gonna yes. have envious moments, jealous moments, but it is what you do with your jealousy that yes. determines who you are as a person. Because I definitely can go back and think about times where I've had friends who I just felt like didn't support me. Mm -hmm. And I still feel like that sometimes, but then there's a difference between somebody who doesn't support you and somebody who just has a life outside of you. Yes. So just knowing how to read a person based on their actions and what they do. I would say pay attention to how they treat other people or talk about their other friends when they accomplish things. That's so important. Because if they're talking about their friends like that, Yes. <laughs> My favorite example that I see online a lot is, well, this has to do with, like, relationships more so, but it can also uh, apply to friends. Um, I feel like we've all met a guy who has, like, been super, or a girl, or a person, a person that we have been dating or interested in that has been super nice to us, but they treat everybody else around them so poorly, and you're thinking, oh, I must be special, but it's like, your time just hasn't come yet, but it's coming because it's just like if this person treats everybody else around them so poorly and says horrible things and it's just a negative person, you're going to reap that because like that's who you're surrounding yourself with. So everything you need to know about a person literally lies in their actions and what they say about other people and their words, you know, not like what you're saying, but um, attention to detail is a nice observance. Uh, observancy it's probably not a word being observant mm -hmm. observancy is a word okay <laughs> it's a must <laughs> it's a must um the older i get the more i realize the importance of just listening and observing before speaking too much mm -hmm. you know like speak your mom and don't don't let everybody in your dome because they might not be good company not everybody is good company yeah. even if it feels like it yes that's a conversation that's a conversation for another day because that's a lot but absolutely yeah and and a good way to know if somebody's your friend is if like say you come to me with a new idea and i'm telling you to go for it and i'm telling you like to do it which is what she does all the time i try i try okay and i feel like a bad friend or somebody who doesn't have the best interest at heart they're gonna list all the negative things that are come that could come from it are they gonna tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it or why you can't do it, why you're not ready. Like you're gonna you want people around you that are gonna push you to do things outside of your comfort zone yes. that you're not gonna do. And that's that's another good way to tell. Yes. Um similarly people who respect your boundaries platonically and romantically and this goes for me as well because I find that well I found that family typically is like the biggest group of people who are like so hell bent on imposing their thoughts mm -hmm. and their beliefs and their ideas of who you are onto it's just like wrong number. Um, but like people who respect your decisions because you know yourself better than anybody else, that's so important. That's so important because the amount of like fickle arguments that I got into with my friends and even ex rendezvous about something that i want to do with like stuff that i know is best for me that's kind of crazy because it's just like okay 
I mean, I guess we can have this conversation. I know what's best for me, but people people love to project. More of the story, that was mm-hmm. a lot. But people love to project. And if your sense of self is not strong enough, you're going to internalize what they're saying about you. And then how you feel about yourself, how you see yourself, all of that shifts. So being deeply rooted is the prereq to, you know, having people respect your boundaries because they're not always going to. But you can make it easy on yourself by ensuring that your family members or your um, friends or your um, whoever you're dating, like they genuinely respect you for who you are and your identity. Yes, and it is a, it's normal for teenagers to not have a sense of self because I just feel like the transition from being a kid to a teenager is so drastic. And you're as a kid, you're you have so much freedom as a kid, but then as a teenager, that's when I feel like parents like to build on responsibilities, yes. and then college, what you can do after mm-hmm. high school. So if you feel like you don't know who you are, it's normal. But I would say, if I go back in time. I would tell myself to just be by myself, to not be afraid to be by myself, not be afraid to go places and explore things by myself. Because I feel like when you spend time by yourself, that is the best way for you to figure out who you are. So don't feel bad. If you if you if you internalize things people say about you, don't feel bad. Just try to really work on knowing who you are. Yes. When you said that, it reminded me of a meme I saw, and it brought me to tears and laughter because I was like, this is so mean. So at the beginning of the pandemic, there was this meme I saw, or this TikTok post, I guess, that was circulating around, and it was like, this is me distracting myself with 57 forms of media so I don't have to have a thought. And I was like, I just burst out laughing because I was like, oh my God, this is me. And I was using social media and music. And I would read sometimes, but like TV to like distract myself from having like clear, concise, coherent thoughts, coherent, coherent thoughts. And similarly, if you keep people around you who are like energy absorbers, that's 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 the term I'm going to use. If you keep those folks around you, you won't be able to like really see yourself for who you are. And that, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that up because if you don't have that me time, also, you're, it's a lot. It's a lot. (laughs) If you don't have that me time to like sit and process and decompress your thoughts and why you feel how you do, you're not gonna really learn anything from like situations that you may be uh, presented with. It's just constant. It's just, (laughs) it's just constant distractions in the form of your friends yeah. or you know like whoever you're surrounding yourself with and that shouldn't be the case if anything your friends should help you when they can you know like clarify when you're having doubts or when you're subconscious and brianna literally the amount of time i, I have to stop because she's human too but i literally call her and i'm like i'm having a day or like we'll just have a casual conversation going back and forth mm-hmm. and i'm just like i love how everything with us just aligns it's just like brick by brick <laughs> We're the frequency. Um, on my cell phone watches. Okay, no, but um, your friends like you should be able to healthily, healthily confine um in them about yes. what you're going through without. I don't want to say judgment, but yeah, without judgment, that's also big. Judging people are not fun. Not at all. And I think that with the society that we're in, it's normal to judge because there's always going to be something that you don't agree with. Like it's like I said, it's just like jealousy or envy or envy. It's yeah. what you do with it. So if you have friends that put you down for making a mistake, um, I don't know if I've ever experienced that firsthand. Maybe when I was in high school, yeah. Yeah. It's like immature. Like, yeah. Growing, so it's like. Yeah, everybody in life is waiting. No one knows anything about anything. We're just here. So don't ever feel like you're true. not human. Like, if you made a mistake, you're human. I promise you, like, one little mistake is not going to erase all the good things you've done for yeah. people. Yes. And if you have friends that are making you feel like less than because you make a mistake, it's really just them yeah. confessing that they probably made some mistakes too. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yo, emphasis. That's a word. Emphasis on everybody is doing it. Mm-hmm. Now, there are some people who have worn it better, which is why they're in the situation that they're in. Mm-hmm. But, like, for the most part, we're just, we're just reading it. We're just reading it. Yeah. 
um, please remember that. I have to remind myself that daily because I get in my head a lot about uni school stuff. And when I think on a macro level, like about what all this really means, it just helps my worries kind of wither away because I'm like, none of this is real. That's a vast, I mean, that's a pretty big um, statement, but it's true. <laughs> everybody's winning, it, guys. Like, literally. Everybody, everybody, everybody's winning. It. It's true. No one really knows why they're here. They're just doing what they love. Most people yeah. are just doing what they love yeah. to do. So, yeah. do what you love to do, and your friends will always hurt you. Yeah. That's such a blessing <laughs> to be able to do that, too. I think that's a very underrated blessing. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, you want to move into red flags? Red flags. Flags. First red flag we have is passive aggressive. Oh, God, yeah. Is there a story here? I'm trying to think. There are several. I have a story. You can tell your story for me. I'm going to go on. I'm going to tell my wife. Tell your story. Oh, man. So, I have this friend. Um, you're not friends anymore. But, um... I just can recall several moments in a friendship where there would be a problem and instead of just talking to me about it, she would just start acting really mean. And I actually had two friends like this. And I'm okay. I saw this TikTok and it was saying like you wonder why a girl is such a bad friend when you meet her mom. And no shade to the mom, no shade to the mom. But the mom the mom was a booty. Just Cassie. like just like yeah, just like the girl. So it was just like Okay, I can't even mad at you because you were raised like that. You think it's normal to treat your friends like that. Yeah. And I don't know, like, I don't like passive aggressiveness. I don't think I'm passive aggressive. If anything, you're not, you are very direct, and I love that about you. Thank you. It did take some, like, training to get myself to that point, mm -hmm. but I just felt like I grew up in a household that was like that, so I scouted friends who were like that as well. Yes. Yeah. So I can't even blame her because I I made her my friend even though I knew she was like that and I knew she was, you know. Mm -hmm. So I definitely think that when it comes to passive aggressiveness, the only thing that you can do for people are like that, if it's not worth saving friendship, just stop talking to them. Genuinely, because that's what I had to do. I had distance myself. Protecting your peace is so important. Um, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, I kind of grew up passive aggressive, but not in like the, not in the red flag way, more so in a like, I don't know if you're in flag way, but it wasn't, it wasn't really intentional. My mom is a very passive aggressive person. So that was my introduction to like some sort of reasoning or logic when it comes to some situations. So I would think, oh, I handled this the best way I knew how. That Plus me being, I'm sensitive. I will, I will own that. A lot of people take pride in like being so mean and like, mm -hmm. like being so egotistical. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm human, and I feel things very deeply. So you miss me being passive aggressive with me being a true empath. Oh brother, it was over everybody. Um, and <laughs> I, I don't think it was until like freshman year that like I had somebody really check me about why I couldn't really be direct about a situation and I was speechless because I was like I mean part of me was scared but not like oh fearful but it's just like when I would get upset I would suppress my feelings instead of bringing them up so that's the passiveness but I was so angry so there's the aggression so I'm like I didn't say anything because I didn't want to like go off but it's like I mean I guess that makes sense but not really because you like you are responsible for learning how to healthily express your emotions especially if you feel that your friendship relationship whatever is worth is worth saving because like doing that once or twice it's like okay we're human we're human we have character flaws but like doing that repeatedly nobody wants to do with that nobody wants to do with that and like even i got tired of myself because i'm like oh i think i'm gonna be the problem if multiple people are coming in so like after freshman year I began to get myself together, but I started to experience that in other people. And I'm not saying that I wasn't as bad, there's not a comparison, but like these are people that I found myself really close with. And as I got older, I got more comfortable in myself and my voice. So when I would meet people who didn't know how to speak up or defend themselves or how to address a problem, I was just like, I don't think this first year was gonna work out because like I don't I don't I didn't know how to respectfully tell people like you gotta stay around and even even if this would mean like that doesn't apply that 
doesn't not apply to me because it's me. Like, I want you to be able to be of opinion, everybody, myself included. So it's actually crazy. I grew up, I grew up very passive aggressive because of both my parents, actually. And I got to high school and things really changed. That's good, though. Yeah. I used to not speak up for myself at all. Yeah. Yeah. Just because when I was growing up, I wasn't able to, or at least I would try, but it was like, a, oh, you're the child of the parents. Oh, brother. Yes. So that definitely carried on to my friendships and relationships as well, because it wasn't until my current relationship, he had to tell me, like, we need to be direct. Like, yeah. he is the reason why I'm so direct now is because he told me, like, you have to tell me when something's bothering me. You have yes. to tell me. Shout out to so. that man. <laughs> Good man, guys. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think that my fear of speaking up for myself just came from, like, what I said. I just didn't want to be by myself, mm -hmm. even though I was the only child. So, it's like, I'm, I know how it is to be by myself. Yeah. But when you get into the habit of having friends, like, I had these friends from 7th grade to 12th grade. Mm -hmm. So, when you get in the habit of having these friends, and then you, you get attached. You start thinking about yep. what's going to happen if you stop being friends with them. And I'm here to tell y'all. <laughs> you'll be okay like yeah. if somebody if somebody is constantly disrespecting you or constantly making you feel like you can't be yourself or constantly making you feel bad for not understanding who they are but then not communicating yes. who they are yes. walk away oh say that part again <laughs> say the what's up what's up for the west walk coast away. Say if they are getting mad at you because they, you don't understand who they are but then they don't explain to you or communicate to you who they are. Mm -hmm. Walk away. There's no point. It's not. It's not worth your happiness. It's not worth your peace. It's not worth your men your mental stability. And honestly, like we were talking about, how our upbringings affect everything. Most of these people were brought up in households like that, so that's why they treat other people like that. It's, yes. It doesn't have anything to do with you. You can't yes. save them. You can't save them. <laughs> I know we focus on saving ourselves. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I man, yeah, a lot of that resonated with me. I spent a lot of my childhood after like trying to fix other people. Mm. And I would never want to turn the mirror inward and look at me. Because I'm like, as long as I'm fixing other people, I'm distracted and I'm helping you. Um, because that's also how my mom was. My mom, she is very nurturing, but she doesn't, like, growing up, she didn't set good boundaries with helping others. So I'm like, I'm thinking, all right, bet. So we got to give, give, give. Mm -hmm. So we said we can't give no more. And now I'm burnt out. And now everybody else is good. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, like, no, like, I thought, I thought that was normalized. So when I started, well, not even when I started, when I got to high school, and even now I'm still in college, like, I'm still, I'm still a giver, but I'm very picky about who I give to and how much mm -hmm. I'm reaching out. Because a lot of people don't know how to, a lot of people don't know how to be like, thank you so much, but it's time for you to do you. Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, I'm eating it up every time. Like, like, what's next? Like, what's for dinner? And <laughs> <laughs> no, like, literally, like, and part of it, I want to say is not on them, but after a, a certain age, it is on you to one, not have somebody want to fix you up so much, because why aren't you working on your self-development one? Two, um, if you know for a fact that this person is not good at setting a boundary, I feel like it's your moral obligation to be like, I really appreciate your help, but I can take it from here. Mm -hmm. Because I've met so many people who are givers and um, they don't know how to set boundaries. So they just end up giving and giving and giving and giving. That's not what I live. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is no way to live. I believe that everybody should reap, and I mean, should, everybody will reap <clears throat> the fruit of the of the plant. Okay, preacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> My mama grew up in church. Sorry. Okay, no. I do believe that everybody is going to reap their fruits of the trees with the seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the analogy. Yeah. I don't know the correct terminology. You reap what you sow. Yes. There you go. Yep. You gotta reap what you sow. And that goes for good and bad, okay? Some givers don't think that they deserve what they get. That was my mom. And like, it's crazy because I used to be like that. Like, I used to think yeah. that 
the bare minimum was all I was gonna get, and I can be okay with that. And I think that just comes from I think that's black women in general, to be honest. Oh my god! Yes, 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 yes. Like, yes, 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 yes. Love yes. my mom, love my grandma. Yes, love all of them. But yes. I, I think that black moms or I would say black moms, they have a really big role to play in what yes. their daughters seek in friendships and relationships. So, and the dad. Yes. I think he started with my dad as well. So, okay. I think pay attention to your parents because your parents could be showing you the wrong behaviors yes. to betray your friendships. So yes. It's all yes. about discernment. Yes. But the crazy thing about it is a lot of people don't bat it bat an eye because, you know, your parents are supposed to raise you up in your like have you set for the world so if your introduction to a friendship if your um introduction to friendship is just chaos and drama and arguing it's mm -hmm. probably because that's what you saw at home and nobody ever checked it like it's still going on so you're like hmm, this is normal um and it's so sad because there are grown people i mean like well until their adulthood like 50 and 60 and it's like when 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 they're asked why they are what they are it's just like oh well, i grew up this way yeah. oftentimes hearing somebody say that's just how i am that's how i was raised it was a different time period it's so off-putting to me because all of those things can be true but the fact of the matter is nobody is responsible for their trauma that is absolutely true but a lot of people think being the victim in having trauma their identity so they have no want like they they have no desire to change because it's like when you start taking accountability you can't continue to talk to people crazy or argue for fun or mm -hmm. just do stuff that you know you simply should not start be doing on. yes or start trauma <laughs> emphasis on, on start trauma <laughs> out of boredom hello you can't do that anymore because if you really cared you know you would want to have a lot of uh, uh, relationships to fix into people really just like being the victim and that's scary because there's no growth in being the victim mm -hmm. there's no growth it's yeah. just it's just sob stories and because, like sadness yeah. because sometimes when trauma is inflicted on you you turn into the villain and if you don't heal from that you turn into the villain and you start inflicting trauma with other people yes so you have yes. to yes. sit and just process things yes. that happen but a lot of people don't do that Yes, and I want to go. I want to go back to what you said about black women being like playing several different roles. Um, a lot of the time when black women are hate crime, or even like when we talk about inequity with pay, mm -hmm. or black women in dating is my favorite thing to talk about because you were talking about how like standards and I think stuff was in the bare minimum that brings something for me because people don't really get that the world hates women. That's true. The pay, the patriarchy is still very strong in America, all across the world, actually. The world hates women. The world hates black people. Hmm. So if you're black and a woman, that's intersectionality. Yeah. I think I said that right? Mm -hmm. um, so we really get the bottom of the barrel in most cases. Um, and I really hate that because we persevere every single time, and the world knows that we're going to come out on top every single time. So the pay is thus they'll pay us stuff and they'll treat us like garbage because they know that we're going to be okay we're going to persevere but it's just like we shouldn't have to we shouldn't have to like no other i don't want to say no other well no no other risk no other reason was enslaved for mm, 500 plus years i don't know um and women 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 do have it bad and this is regardless of race now of course white women have it easier than any any race <laughs> I'm having flashbacks. Okay. Um, <laughs> they obviously have it easier, but intersectionality of being black and being a woman, God forbid you're queer. Like, no. Yeah. Um, but as far as what you said about the bare minimum, I felt that. I really felt that because growing up, um, I don't want to talk about mine now, but well, yeah. Growing up, like seeing my mom, she was a perfect example. Like, Seeing her kind of like accept the bare minimum for my lens and relationships, I'm like, okay, this is the blueprint. This is what I deserve. Mm -hmm. And I thought it just stopped there. Like, I really love logging on Twitter and seeing, or TikTok, maybe TikTok, and seeing black women talk about how their partners are like so active in their um, family dynamic. Um, or even just in a casual 
relationship. It makes me so happy because black women are so deserving. Like, I don't know. I don't know why the narrative is that, like, we are super women and we can just take bullets. And it's just, no, babe, we're human. We are. We're human. We just have a black woman. Yeah. Very sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. It's because we don't want to do nothing. We just want to chill. It exists. Like, sometimes existing as a black woman is just so exhausting, you know? It's a bit exhausting. <laughs> Voice. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I love, I love you really when you that. I just, I had to, I had to get my word off because I hate that so much. And I want to circle back and do another episode and talk about that in detail because there's a science behind why we are viewed the way that we are viewed. Like, oh, yeah. why we're supposed to be um, superheroes with black men are coddled. They're very coddled in the media. Mm-hmm. Um, Unless you do something wrong. Yes, in actual households, it's a lot. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a conversation that we have. But I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, we kind of talked about conflict and stuff like that already. Yes, we did. Like, so we, we talked about the human brutality. Another thing we had was only wanting you to exist in your world or attach your issues. Oh, brother. And this is something that I actually struggled with. For a long time. I was guilty and I'm still kind of guilty, but I'm gonna let you go first because <laughs> I don't I don't want to tell myself right now. I'm mm, chilling. So being the only child uh, how can I explain this? I was so naive that there were even other kids that existed because I was the only child. I, I just grew up with a bunch of adults in my face. So I'm thinking, okay, like this is my world and mm-hmm. once I started getting friendships I don't even think I'm not a type of person. I'm not a type of person to act on my jealousy, so it wasn't like that. But I definitely would have a hard time shifting my perspective to see people as some as people who had their own lives, just because everything was centered around growing up. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. don't know when the first time I ever experienced that was, mm-hmm. but I think that just having friends who reassure you or having friends who uh, make time for you is a good way to mm-hmm. navigate if they're really your friend because I I'm trying to think like I don't think I ever acted on this I don't know if any of my old friends felt like I did but I know that whenever I would see my friends interact with their friends I would always want that like I've always had friend groups where I was like I'm only friends with you I don't have friends and that's me that's me though and that's cool because I'm very introverted I like yes. being by myself but like, that's where the jealousy would come from in my friendships is when I see them have other friends. And then I'd be like, dang, they got other friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I guess, cool. I, that's okay. Yeah. And that is something that I had to, like, grow into. Yes, because that is so deep rooted. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. don't feel bad if you have fashion issues. It really comes from childhood. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Emphasis on everything does. Everything does. Um, I want to piggyback off of you. It's giving discussion board. Anyways. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So, like, when you were talking about your childhood, I felt that. Mm-hmm. So, I'm an only child on my mom's side. I have five siblings on my dad. This is ten fingers. I have five siblings on my dad's side. I'm the oldest. So, my little sister was born when I was turning six. I think I was five turning six. So, I was still pretty young. Um, but I was, I was, I was very loved growing up. I was very, very, very loved growing up by both parents and my grandparents on my mom's side and my grandma on my dad's side. Like I was, I was very loved. So my, um, well that has shaped me a lot. Like like I'm going to my womanhood, but like it shaped me, like my character is very centered around love and joy. And I'm a little nervous, so y'all probably can't see it, but I literally laugh and joke all day. Like that's my personality trait. I made it. I made it top three. My personality trait to just be having fun. I say all that to say that when my sister was born, I was only five, so I was like, "So not enough. Where did you come from?" And for the longest, like I had angst against my baby sister, which I really hate because she didn't deserve that growing up. Like we were both liberal children, and I realized that my anger was with my dad because I was like, "I don't have to share you. I don't have to share you love," but. There are six of us, so I think as I got older and my siblings 
I love my siblings to death. Disclaimer, because this sounds kind of bad. But like, <laughs> as as my number of siblings increased, my resentment towards my dad kind of grew because, like, I don't have vivid memories of me and my dad when I was younger. Um, a lot of my the good parts of my childhood I remember like in vivid detail, but I was also young. Like I was at five twenty six when my baby sister was born. Um, so I don't have vivid memories of him. And I hate, I hate sharing. I hate, I don't really like sharing in general. I've grown a lot on that because I don't believe stingy people get blessings. Sorry, you have to share. Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I will do it. Um, I don't like sharing. I don't like sharing people. Um, and that was my dad. That was my dad. And I'm the only, I'm the only kid on my mom's side. So like, I've always had my mom. It was me, my mother, um, and my granddad, and my grandma. Like, grand. My grandma passed away when I was seven. So my grandpa passed away when I was seventeen, actually. So for a good chunk of my life, it was just me, my mom, and my granddad. My dad has always been in my life, but my parents got divorced when I was a little younger. So that trio of me, my mom, and my granddad, we were um, unstoppable. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. Um, and they just always show me, my dad too, but like they just always show me the utmost love. Um, so I'm like, all right, bet I'm the main character, right? Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't. Um, so what did you say? You said something, and I I thought it was so funny. Oh, yeah, like people having lives outside of you. Um, we share a mutual friend. I'm not going to name her. We share a mutual friend. And um, seeing how close she is with her family, it makes me emotional in a good way because I'm like, that's so beautiful. Now, I, disclaimer, I'm also here for all family types, blended, nuclear. I forgot the other ones, so there's a, uh, those are the only ones that I know. But I'm here for all family types. Like, I love, I love when people with, like, 10 kids can, like, get married to somebody with, like, four kids and they're, like, a big reality tv show full of people that love each other i think that's so beautiful because family is not just mommy daddy biological mommy biological sister like i consider brianna family um i can't <laughs> um we have a group chat called the stallion of ponies and i legitimately consider everybody in that chat family because of our bond and the things that we tell each other and how we spend time and how they make me feel. Yes, and we all need each other in the world to grow. Yes, that is so important. That is so important. Um, no, but back to our mutual friend. So like just seeing how close she is with her family, it just it's just like this is what I want my future family to look like. Cause I think that's so important. There are so many messed up people who have truthfully been messed up since birth because like their family structure has just always like it was it was never solid mm -hmm. and who you are like you know who you are when you're a child and me and Brianna have talked about this you know who you are when you're a child because that is before the world imposes their ideas society tells you who you're supposed to be their parents project onto you before any of that before you're cognizant enough to like really underst understand that <laughs> you know who you are yes. you know who you are and with that I have come to hate the term I'm gonna find my term. You're just returning home. Yeah. To yourself. You're returning home to yourself because like you you know who you are since you were a child. Since before you even born, like that's all another conversation. Or yourself. even create yourself. Yeah. You're literally being whatever you want to be. Yes. And that's the thing about the society is like they don't give you room to grow and I feel yes. like I feel like that stems into our friendship. Uh -huh. Like when you have this perception of somebody, you have that perception of them. And if you don't have an open mind, to let them grow that's that's not a healthy dynamic yeah so and yeah that's the quickest way to lose a friend because um something about me like when i used to dim my light for relationships really and friendships my final straw was when like the conversations would just make me physically ill and i'm like this is not for me anymore mm -hmm. um and when you take enough of that that's all it takes all it takes is that like that that final comment, that final conversation where you're like, this is no longer for me. Um, where you're like, I no longer want to shrink myself. That's what you want to talk. What do what were you just saying? That's what you're saying. Um I'm talking about how perception room to grow. Yes, perception room to grow. So important. 
it's so important. If if you if you don't allow others to grow, it's the biggest way to lose a friendship because we're not we're not entitled to people. Like we're not entitled to people. And I used to think I was like everybody who ever comes to my life, everybody who's ever said they're gonna be back and we're gonna be friends forever. It's a lot of people. And I'm really happy that half of them have kicked the bucket. They didn't die, but like it's no longer in my life. So like I'm happy. I'm happy that's the case, but also my favorite thing, one of I've been learning a lot of stuff, but like the top three things that I've ever learned is that some people you're just meant to experience for a set amount of time. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure I've met the people who are gonna be in my life forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But I used to ruin a lot of friendships that would be like, Are you gonna be friends forever? Mm-hmm. Like, are you gonna come to my wedding? Like, are you gonna be my birthday? Like it puts a lot of pressure. On it does. It's just like, yo, go with the flow. Nah, you gotta know when not to go with the flow. That's another conversation. But for the most part, just go with the flow and allow, allow your, like, allow your friendship to grow. Yeah. If, if it is meant to be, and if not, I promise you, you don't have to do anything but exist, and everything's gonna fall into your lap. Yep. Quite literally, when you do your part, everything else aligns. Yeah. Make sure you're taking back care with people. Yes. 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 Because there have been times. This is before I became, you know, the new me. But there, <laughs> there have been times where, like, I wouldn't want to use people, but, like, I had ulterior motives for our friendship. And when you try to, like, I would try to be like, oh, well, no, you know, like, this isn't what this really means. But you can try to downplay it all you want, but the creator knows. Like, the universe literally feels your energy, and they know your intentions before you have even met this person. So when you try to lie to yourself, that's, that's when you know you need to reassess your situation because nah I used to do that and every time without fail I would I would see why it just wasn't a good idea to begin with um and I'm happy I learned that lesson sooner than later because people really like finagle their way through relationships with ulterior motives and now you're 50 and you don't have a single solid relationship with anybody besides your pet fish it Ooh. was crazy how many older people in my life don't have any friends and i'm just like how do you do how do you do that yes i don't think i think i will go crazy yes absolutely and i'm not saying this like you but like if i didn't have our friend group plus with school and work i don't i think i think i will be in a loony bin because y'all really keep me grounded but it's important to have people respectfully check you when you're wrong. Because mm-hmm. if it's just you and you're just in your head, your ego will eat you up. And you think you like the hottest thing on earth. And it's good to have that confidence. But you need to know when you're wrong. And also, companionship is so healthy. I really hate that social media has made like wanting a relationship or wanting a couple of friends to hang out with. It's like, oh, you're desperate. Or love yourself. Yeah. It's a lot deeper than that. Also, social media has like rap. A lot of people's minds been thinking that the only thing they need is a relationship. And that's not true at all. Like, when it comes to like romance, I feel like platonic friendships have helped me so much, especially with other young women. Because yes. like, you get me and I get you. Yes. And, and I type of love. We see each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, literally, yes. Um, I saw a tweet. No, it was a TikTok. I've been on Twitter, so you don't listen to Twitter a lot in this podcast. <laughs> but it was it was actually a TikTok saying how like, what if our relationships are just like our friend things, but our true soulmates are our platonic friends? And I think that's so beautiful because I don't know what it is about love, romantic love, but I feel like your lens is gonna always be just a little bit when it comes to seeing your partner romantically for who they really are because I'm in love with them and I just don't really want to like break up so I'm just kind of like excuse a lot of stuff whereas if you're friends with somebody it's like yo I see you for who you are and the amount of moments the amount of times that like I've had that realization while being like with someone is it's kind of scary because it's like now I see you for who you are and I don't I don't want to be a friend. Or on the writing notes, like, I see you for who you are. I'm really happy you're <laughs> in my life. Now, recently in my life, the latter half has been happening where, like, I'm seeing my friends, like, I'm seeing y'all for who y'all really are. Like, what 
you guys are going to be and what y'all are going to blossom into. And it's the most beautiful thing ever. Um, and I'm so blessed to have a solid group of women. Mm -hmm. Oh, she does. She does. All right. All right. Shout out. <laughs> yes. We love you guys. Mwah. No, but, um, oh, okay. No, but it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Platonic love, platonic love has blessed me with like so much more than I think any romantic relationship. Definitely. And yeah. I've never, I've never had a, a friend group of girls. Oh, I have, but like that was so long ago. So yeah. it's really, it's really amazing to experience it and get to know them and like experience their lives outside of me. And sometimes. Yeah. They bring me into their lives outside of me. So it's cool. I'm like, oh, I'm a side character. It's cool. <laughs> yes. That's fun. Yeah. So definitely. Make sure you are taking your time when you're scouting your friends. Yes. Take your time. Like, it's not for you. It's not. <laughs> It's not draft season for the NBA. Um, <laughs> championships are not next month. Please take your time. Take, take your time. time. Take your time. Take your time. Take you're time. so young. You haven't even met everybody you're going to meet in this lifetime. That's gonna love you deeply and genuinely. Yes, I have. I have my days, but when I remember that, it grounds me every time because it's like there are so many more people that you're gonna meet who you're gonna fall in love with platonically, maybe romantically. Um, and they're going to love you. And that bond that y'all are going to grow to have is going to be beautiful. Yeah. Indescribable, really. And I remember that. And I'll be a little less sad on those days, but I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and communicate. Always communicate. Please. Um, communicate on the good days. Communicate on the bad days. Don't be afraid to show gratitude towards your friends and make them feel like you're appreciative of them. Yes, I'm the queen of that. I'm sorry, but there was there was a time period where in our group chat, every time we link, I would be like, okay, you guys, I have to get my drunk speech. I don't drink, so I was always sober. And I would be like, I really love you guys. And, you know, thank you guys for coming and hanging out with me. And I will meet literally every time. And But I will meet it every time because I'm so big on telling people that you love them. So big. Because, like, when they come to me and they're like, no, I'm just, I'm having a bad day or, I don't know, I'm not really feeling love. I'm like, I just want to make sure that I did my part. You can't make people feel like overtly loved because there's a lot more to it than just telling somebody I love you. Like there's a like there's a lot of aspects that go into that. But as long as I do my part, I'm okay. And it just it just pours out of me. And this has a lot to do with how I was raised um growing up. You know, like being loved, like I like it's fun for me to give love to others. Like it's nothing. Like I'd be like, I love you. <laughs> like to you, to Rashida, to everybody, yeah. and every chat. But yeah, the love just comes out of me. So gratitude, gratitude is the most for sure. Yes. And set boundaries. Always. Oh, yes. Don't be afraid to tell somebody no. Don't be afraid to tell somebody next time. Yes. See you later. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid. Yeah. And. Thank you for tuning into the show. Thank you for watching the show. Yes. I hope you watch the next episode. Me too. We'll be back. We'll be back. Bye. Bye.